Good afternoon, everybody, and happy Monday. I am here because this week is Animal Poison Prevention Week, and we're raising awareness about what things in your household are poisonous to your pets and how to keep them safe. I also have my first aid kit here that I can go through after I'm done my little spiel. Okay, so the importance of keeping these things out of reach of pets is important not only for them, but small children are also very curious and some of, these, some of these things could be very dangerous for them. So just to keep that in mind. Um, so here's my spiel. <laughs> um, potpourri is very dangerous, especially if you keep it low enough that kids can put it in their mouth or dogs can swallow it because some of the chemicals and aerosols in it are very, very dangerous for them. No aerosols, especially around birds that are caged because it kind of suffocates them. Not to the point of death, but to the point of choking and being in serious danger. No cigarette butts for obvious reasons. You don't want a child or a dog or cat swallowing cigarette butts because of the high level of tobacco that's in them that can, it's very, very toxic. Batteries need to be stored away. Purses, especially those with food wrappers or gum. Xy the xylitol in gum, which is kind of similar to the sugar, is very toxic for dogs especially. So keep your purses off the floor. Um, human foods such as, there's a list of about 50 and I'm not going to give them all to you, but the most popular ones are onions, chocolate, grapes, and macadamia nuts because people don't, I mean dogs can have some nuts, but Peanuts, not a good idea. Macadamia, that's not a good idea. Once in a while, I'll give my dog an almond or two, but try to keep it out of feeding it to them all the time. Usually if I play catch with her with small food, it's usually blueberries or raspberries or something like that. Um, garbage, obviously. Make sure it's closed and they can't get into it because a lot of dogs have gone to the emergency room because they have gotten into garbage and swallowed a lot, a lot of things that are very dangerous for them. Alcohol, for obvious reasons. Human medications, they need to be safely stored. And if you are giving your pet any kind of medication, make sure that it's specific to pets. Because sometimes they react differently to the chemicals that are in human medication. And there's a different dosage and strength of the actual pill or liquid. So we want to make sure that they're safe that way too. And then there's the usual stuff, the cleaning and things in the garbage and the garage. So cleaning products, poison, glue, antifreeze, car products like windshield washer fluid, brake fluid, fertilizers, insecticides, and herbicides. So if you are spraying your backyard, eventually when it gets a little warmer, I know it's not there yet, but when it gets a little warmer, keep your dog off of the lawn for a little bit, at least to let it dry, maybe for an hour or two, or take them out somewhere else instead of letting them play in the backyard because they have pores in their feet and they will soak it directly up into their system. So that's really important. There's a list of toxic plants as well, and a lot of them are very common in the household. I will post the link for the poison poisonous plants list under this video. But if your pet does happen to get into anything, I have the Pet Poison Helpline number here. There is a cost when you use their helpline, but if it saves your pet's life, then it's definitely worth it. In Ontario, the number is 855-764-7661. If you type in petpoisonhelpline.com, they have a website where they have emergency instructions for if you know what your pet has swallowed and a list of poisons if you don't. <laughs> um, so this is the first aid kit that I have. It is from Walks and Wags. I took my pet first aid training with them and you have to renew it every two years. I think it's an Ajax if I remember correctly. So I'm just going to open it and show you. It's pretty much packed. I haven't had to use it yet, luckily. 
But they have everything from cooling blankets, gauze, wraps, the sticky tape. They have some strange stuff in here too, like um, pantyhose. Because if your dog, if I remember this correctly, if your dog um, tries to pull off the gauze, you put the gauze and you wrap it around with the tape and then you put this over it so that they can't get to everything. So I know a lot of dogs, like when they go for their spay and neuter surgery, they try and get to it and that's why they make them wear the cone. My dog would not tolerate the cone, so I took one of my pajama t-shirts and I cut the bottom off and I let her wear that because it kept her from licking her incision. There's also a pair of special scissors for cutting gauze, safety, gloves, and all kinds of um, sterile wipes for anything like that. Let's see what else is in here. Triangle bandage, sponges for decompression, and cold relief. Now there's a couple of extra things my instructor told us to put in and I don't have all of them but one of them is this little, it's usually with Advil, with children's Advil, they give you this to measure it out. This is actually in case your dog's eye pops out and you put it in here with saline so that it doesn't dry out and you can put it back in. How super gross is that, right? Um, they usually run their first aid classes in the spring and fall, but it depends on demand. So the more people that want to take the class, they will eventually take it. So I think I'm going to take it again in the summer. If anyone wants to come with me, that would be so fun. Um, but that's the first aid kit. Um, my five day challenge starts next Monday. Instead of doing a sign up list, I think that whoever posts a completed picture under the first video that I'm going to do on Monday, I'll just consider that they're participating. So if you do want to participate, again, the topic is how to strengthen the bond with your pet. The challenges are pretty easy. They get harder as the week goes on, but it's going to be fun. Kai is very excited about it. Um, my webinar is on April 7th, and I'm teaching Animal Reiki later this summer. You can check my events on my page for more information about that. Um, I will be at Moonflower's Magical Touch on Saturday doing demonstrations and the usual vendor type thing that we do. A um, lot, a lot of people come out for that. If you are interested in any kind of crystals or healing or getting a psychic reading done or my brother's going to be there, he's doing his uh, wellness scanning, NES, it's a full body scan. Um, I will be doing mini acupressure and Reiki sessions for your pet. So if you want to bring your pet, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, I'm doing a, I have little doggy bags made. I'm, I'm not going to show them to you, but they have a couple of all natural beef liver treats in them. And I can, if your dog doesn't like beef liver, beef liver, well, um, I'm going to bring some kale banana treats if you want them to try that one instead. But, all very exciting, um, lots of new content, I'm very excited. I will be back on Thursday for National Puppy Day. Doesn't that sound amazing? <laughs> um, but I hope you all have a very good Monday, and make sure to keep all poisonous things just in the cupboards or off the floor, because you never know what your dog could get into, and it could mean the difference between you know, like a $5,000 vet bill or your pet dying. So it's really important to remember these things. Actually, when I first got Kai, I printed out a list of poisonous foods for pets and I stuck it on the fridge downstairs because all of her food prep is downstairs. And I wanted to make sure, I was so over the top because she's my first dog, that I wanted to make sure that I did everything right. So I had the food list and I was like, okay, she can't have any of these treats. And then every time we have dinner, my mom or my brother will say, can Kai have this? And if I don't know, I'll go downstairs to the list and it's like, oh, okay, maybe she can't, she can't digest it properly. So I don't use it as much as I used to because now I know, but I will also post that list under this feed. But if you are in Stovall, don't forget to check out the 
world record breaking 16 day concert at the Earl. Very exciting. That's on Main Street, just across from where they're take tearing down that building. There's a big crane. Pretty hard to miss it. It's just east of the train tracks. Very cool. Go Stowe, though. <laughs> Have a great Monday, everybody.